Hey, hey everybody, this is Melina from ScrapbookingWithMe.com and Me Crafty Scrapper here on YouTube and Instagram and over on Facebook at Me Crafty Scrapper Creates. And today I wanted to show you the January e-club kit and it has got lots and lots of good stuff in it. Um, if you are a subscriber to the e-club kit, this was one of, I mean like a really, really, really good one. And when you got it, you knew that you got some really good stuff. Um, if you'll notice in your kit, you got a um, long list or a little string of tickets. And I'm going to show you how I'm going to alter these tickets so that they will go along with this kit. Because, of course, this is like a red, a plain like, kind of primary red. And it doesn't go along with our theme here. But you can alter these tickets and make them your own. And then we'll make our project. And I'm wanting this project to be a little simple because I want to use the whole 6x8 paper on front and back of what we're going to make with some of this 8.5 by 11 paper as our um, spine and then accents throughout the project. If you'll notice, you're going to get to see some of the kind of distorted way of seeing the stuff above me because this is mirrored cardstock. So there is the mirrored cardstock. You see my light at the top <laughs> of my room and part of me there and my camera above me. And then you get a light blue and then a tan and we got some wonderful digital art from Miss Betty Ann Renfro. I love those circles. I'm going to get those cut out fussy cut out. You get um, some sticker sheets. Now everybody got different sticker sheets but they should be from the same line. But you got some sticker sheets. You got a whole sheet of score tape. So this is score tape but it's a the whole sheet is sticky. So that can come in handy with spines of journals and things like that. You got die cuts and some kind of trim and some kind of little clips and then of course your six by eight paper this one has a winter theme it's winter woods from simple stories and then that row of tickets now i got this um it's called delusions shimmer spray out of a previous kit and i'm going to shake 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 and i'm going to get out my messy mat and we're going to alter some tickets. Now I'm not exactly sure how I'm going to use these tickets in my project yet so I'm going to try to keep them in one long piece because I don't know if I want to you know make a belly band or what. So I'm going to get my spray and I'm not going to take it out like I usually do when I splatter. I'm just going to spray. So I'm going to start spraying these tickets and we're going to make them something just for us that goes along with our kit so spray 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 and then if you've got some other kind of spray or if you've got some paint this is from another kit it's that picket fence distress paint and just put a little bit little dot here and there and I think it stopped up <laughs> yep it was look at there big old thing right there and then I'm going to find just a little Dollar Tree paintbrush and I'm going to move that around some. I don't want to cover everything. I just move it around some. So it looks like a horrible, horrible train wreck of a mess right now. But when it dries, you will see that we've got altered tickets. And then with my excess, I'm going to get a book page and sop up some of that. Okay, huh, I love that, as is, and we'll put that aside to dry, and then some uh, index cards, if I can find them. Oh yeah, and guest tickets, I've got some guest tickets here. Reminds me of my day, my waitressing days, so I'll dip the guest ticket into my line of tickets 
and I put white on mine just because the um, papers and stuff that we're using does have white in them. Okay, so there's a guest ticket altered. And then, like I said, I'm going to put these aside to dry in a minute. But we've got to get everything sopped up because I don't like not using the stuff. It's all got to get used. Use it up, use it up. There's another guest ticket altered. And I don't care if they get some of that on the back. Let's do another. And these are just for my stash. These did not come in the kit. But that would be nice to put a couple of those in a kit one day. Maybe. I like that idea. That and... that alter that up a little bit and smear that one there we go and then a lot of that is dry now we're just going to put all of this aside and let it dry and let our tickets dry we might do a little bit of stamping of some kind like a script pattern maybe okay it's dried just a little bit and i want to put some more gold accent through here with this shimmer spray so i will take the top off and splatter that but i do like that you can still see the admit one and the numbers and stuff on the tickets on most of them but I wanted a little bit more splatter, especially on those middle ones there that didn't have any. And then we will let this dry and do a little bit of stamping on it. And um, then we'll use it in our project we're gonna make. Now, if you are not an e-club subscriber I will leave the link the direct link uh, in the description box below so that you can get over there and sign up for the e-club kit now when you sign up if you sign up before the 15th of the month before the 15th of the month you get the next month's kit we have to order these kits like two months in advance so that's why we have to make this rule if you sign up after the 15th of the month so let's say that you get on there and you sign up and it's the 19th doesn't matter what month it is if you sign up on the 19th or if you sign up on the 30th you're going to get not the next month's kit but the next month's so you won't be billed until it's two months away so let's say if you signed up January the 1st then you're going to get February's kit if you signed up January the 14th you're going to get February's kit if you signed up February the 6th I mean January the 16th you're going to get March's kit if you signed up January the 29th you're going to get March's kit. So see, that's how it goes. We have to order the kits on the 15th, two months in advance. So that's how that works, just so that we have enough supplies for everybody. Now, I have cut a piece of the mirrored cardstock. That's going to be my spine. Um, we're going to make a very different kind of book today. <laughs> this is going to be my cover, and this is going to be the back. Actually, that's going to be the back. That's going to be the inside back those beautiful deer antlers and then this where the people are playing and stuff that's going to be my inside front and I'm going to make this part a little curved this is two and a half inches wide that I've made this now these are six by eight so our book is going to be a little bigger than what I normally make out of uh, e-club kits but I've got this idea in my head and we're just gonna see if it works <laughs> so 
So I'm just barely kind of manipulating that to get a little bit of a curve to it. And what's going to happen is, y'all are just going to have to bear with me and see all of my stuff above me. What's going to happen is, I'm going to put down a piece of score tape and I'm going to put that spine on here and then I'm going to do the same thing and we're going to put it on there. So, let me get, this is the five eighths inch score tape I do believe it's either three eighths or five eighths I'm not good with my measurements so whatever it is it is <laughs> that's what I'm using today uh, isn't that just a wonderful teacher I'm just telling you I make everything so easy don't I let's find my little pick and pick off that back and before I put that spine on where it kind of ripped a little bit I'm gonna re-ink that. I am inking with um, what am I inking with today? Walnut stain oxide okay and I'm going to line this up and with this piece it's a little bit easier because I've got a line there where the wood grain is on the actual paper. So I'm going to line it up and make sure everything is good and <laughs> where it should be. My spine is just a tad bit taller than my paper, but it's all right. Okay. And then, I'm going to do the same thing back here. Put my piece of score tape. Okay, this is going to be my back. So that's where, yep, that's where I need. Yes. Just making sure. Make sure, make sure before you put down your score tape. Okay. And then take off the back. And then we gotta line it up same way. This tends to be the hardest part for me. It's very easy for others, but it just tends to be the hardest part for me because I want to get it exactly how it needs to be the first time and I don't want to have to reset it or anything so I'm just trying to get it exactly and then I'll turn it over make sure everything looks right and it does yay Okay, so I'm going to bend and manipulate that spine a little bit more. Okay, and then with that ribbon that we got in the kit, whatever I'm putting in here is going to be, um, you know, this part in here will be covered up. So what I'm going to do is get me another little piece of score tape and I'm putting it down here and then another piece up here and you can use that piece of um, score sheet that you received in your kit if you want to just cut it up make sure that when you're cutting it that you use some kind of sticky scissors you know scissors that you don't care if they get sticky and you can clean up later okay and I'm gonna start this ribbon in here a little piece right there and I'm gonna wrap this around and then I'm gonna make sure that it touches that other piece of score tape that's up there and then I'm not going to have enough to go wah, 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 wah. So if you have ribbon on a spool, go for it. Just keep going round and round and round. 
on this one, I'm going to chop it. And then I'm going to come back around. Do another piece there in the middle. Kind of V it out. Put it on the opposite side of that one. And then I might need just a tad more score tape just to get this last piece down and you can secure it too so works out both ways take that off and then you're just going to make sure that you get all of that score tape covered up on the inside so your pages or whatever you put on the inside don't get stuck okay and then one last piece there and I'm just going to crisscross it and go over here this way and I'll you can manipulate these ribbons back and forth and closer in and stuff too however you want to do it and then figure out how you want to attach it there. What I want to do is come over that way so that I can have, <laughs> you see me, <laughs> so that I can have, there we go, like that. I want it to be taped down right there. So I'm going to put me a little piece there. And then I'm wanting to reinforce this spine so I'll put another piece down there and cover that up it's probably going to be the piece that my signature is attached to because this is going to be um, just like this I'm not going to put a signature on the outside of it I'm just going to leave it like this maybe put another decoration or two on it but I'm going to have like a floating spine and this one okay I'm going to trim that off and then put another piece of uh, cardstock here and it doesn't really matter what you put down because like I said everything's going to get uh, covered up what I think I'm going to do is get some craft cardstock and let that be the piece that my signature is sewn to and attaches here. So let me make one that is about two inches wide, I do believe. So this piece is two inches wide by eight inches tall. And that's going to be my piece that my pages get attached to. And then it will cover up all of this but you really can't see all of that mess until I pull it up for you and then of course like I said you can move these ribbons around however you want to I like kind of willy-nilly like how that is so I'm good with that you can spread them out evenly or put them three in a row straight however you want to do it that's just a, another little way of um, dressing up your spine especially if you're not going to sew through it now i'm going to go ahead and ink the edges of this and the top just in case that is seen after i sew everything into it all right i have six sheets of um, tea dyed paper just copy paper that I tea dyed I have videos on that if you would like to know how to start that I'm going to cut them down to seven and three quarters tall just so they won't be taller than because this is going to be my height because they're going to get folded over you see okay so I'm going to cut these at seven and three quarters so just cutting about a half inch off of these 
and just scooch, 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 and leave in place, and you can cut the rest of them. Okay, these are good leftovers to do a zigzag stitch down the middle on your sewing machine and use as borders on your pages. I believe in saving, y'all. <laughs> Save everything. Uh, I'm going to fold these over. And then line them up, organize them how I want them. And then we're going to add some of the pages from our pad into this also. Okay, so this is going to be what we sew into. And we're going to add pages to this. So these are kind of going to just be our base, you know. Alright, when I add these in here, I'm going to have about, I would say, a half inch left out this way. So on this edge, I'm going to have about a half inch. So that lets me know that when I add my papers onto these pages, I can come out just a little bit if I want to. So if I were to, like, this is like one of the prettiest pages in the whole book. So you could do like this, and you'll want to, you know, cut off the top or the bottom somewhere to get it down to seven and three quarters like your page is and you could add this as a flip out another page or just the accent on the end of the page so i want to do i want to cut this here and use this as an edger on this first page i love that design so i'm just going to cut Firstly, let's cut a little bit there off the bottom, and then the other side. Okay, we're already there, seven and three quarter, and then I want to trim this at about three and three quarters like that and I want to round my corners we have been selling out of this corner rounder punch like crazy quick so I have ordered an excess of these like a big quantity <laughs> of these to keep us um, in stock for a little while I love that I love this part. I love that this kind of counteracts that. And I think it would be beautiful having some kind of, I don't know, washi tape or something going down through here after we attach this. So I want to make sure of how far out we need that. See, that's too far. So I need to go in on the page some and just have it where it is sticking out about yay far okay and then i'm going to put it up against yes that will work so that's how i'm going to use these papers that are in this and we're going to make some bigger pockets in this book also so that if we want to add pictures, four by six pictures, we can into the pockets. So it's going to be a little bit bigger that way. We can make it a huge brag book if we want to. We can use it as a mini album if we want to. Whatever we want to do, it is up to us. And I love that. And I think I'm going to use my handy dandy. ATG to put this on so I'm going to go all the way down um, if you do not have one of these and you're interested in them I have these listed in my Amazon storefront the refills and the actual machine 
glider. Okay, I'm going to go about yay far out. Don't go all the way to the end because remember this is going to stick out some. And then I also remembered it is going to stick out some so I need to ink this side of this also. Like of that. And then I'm going to do a few strips down through there. And get this attached. Um, I'm just going to do this one example for you and then we're going to sew in our signature and get that attached and then we'll do the rest of our decorating. Okay, so when you open up this book that's going to be your first little page there. I love that. See we could have left this open here and had it a little tuck space there. We can still make a tuck space by putting down a band of something here and having a little tuck space there. I think that is a really good idea and I think I will do that. But let's go ahead and get it sewn in to our little two inch piece here. I'm going to get my needle and my awl and my wax thread and my foam platform and we're going to clip these together so they don't go flying anywhere and yes my pages are good and wavy I love them like that a lot of people do not like them like that and they iron them with a regular clothes iron go for it but um, I've got wow that hurt I've got way too much stuff to do I poke myself with one of those stylus thingies um, I've got way too much stuff to do than to be standing over an ironing board ironing pages. That really went down in there. <laughs> and I'm leaving that in, I'm leaving that in this video so y'all know. I hurt myself in my studio too, just like everybody else does. <laughs> Alright, so kind of sort of middle there we go and then top somewhere there we go and then same thing top somewhere or bottom somewhere there we go and now what I'm gonna do is just so this stays on my signature pretty good. I'm going to get just a tiny little line of glue. If my glue will come out, now it's not going to be a tiny little line because it's stuck. There we go. Tiny little, look at there, crooked line of glue to attach that signature. I'm just getting that signature a little tacky on the back so that it won't be flying all over the place when I attach it to this floating spine piece. Okay, just like that. I want to scoot it up a little bit. It's already trying to adhere really good which is a good thing you want that but I just want to make sure that I'm getting it pretty close to middle so I think it needs to come over just a little bit that way there we go I'm good with that I don't care if it's perfectly okay and then I'm just going to easily poke straight through that piece of cardstock and through to my foam platform. That was good, Melanie. Good job. Okay. And then before I adhere or come through the back side, I'm going to poke through on the top so that I'm all the way through that cardstock. 
and then I'm going to poke through on the bottom. Somebody asked me the other day, where's your thimble? Mm, I can't find it. <laughs> so I'm using my nails. A total, total, total no-no. But I am. Okay, and then I'm going through that floating spine piece. And then going through my signature, but I got to go through the right way so I can go to the middle it's not wanting to do that for some reason let's do that and see nope we're still not in the middle and you can straighten up that spine piece however you need to and then through to the bottom and then through that spine piece. And you're pulling up here in the middle and pulling back here at the bottom to get it nice and tight. Then going back through the middle To get that three hole binding done so there we are through the middle now this tail is on this side of that middle so I want to get this tail that's about to come through with my needle on the other side okay and then I'm gonna pull and pull back and forth and you are going to get some ripping that is inevitable because you're coming through paper. So don't worry too much about that. I just want to make sure that it is tight and that all the pages are in and sewn. And they are and we are through there. Not too much wobble on the back. Okay, and then double knot. Press that double knot down with a straight edge of some kind. I'm using my bone folder. I'm using some scrap cabin uh, yeah scrap cabin shop off of Etsy this is mushroom I'm using some of that seam binding if I can find the end and we're gonna put a piece in the middle of our spine so I'm gonna get that needle back Attach it here. This is just a me thing. I like putting ribbon in the middle of my book spines. And it doesn't really matter what kind of ribbon. I just like putting ribbon. It could be lace, trim, seam binding, whatever. I just like it a lot. And it's very easy to go through seam binding. Okay, so there's that. I'm just going to tie that once and do a bow. Okay, and then trim off just a little bit of that so there's not so much string. And this is already, you know, crimped up seam binding, so you'll pull it out some. It'll get where it's kind of like a bookmark. We'll stretch that out a little bit later. Now, I'm going to attach this into my book. I'm going to put 
score tape all down the back of this, covered completely. Okay, and there is my score tape all put on the back of that floating spine piece. <clears throat> I'm going to take the backs off of this and then I'll fill in where there is not score tape with liquid glue. Okay, then you're going to make sure of what is your front, and that is my front, so that's what I need up here. And we're going to put this piece matched up with that white piece, and it's going to come over onto these pieces a little bit too, and that just helps to secure it even more. Okay, and then press that down, and then I'm going to get my bone folder, and I'm going to press down and flip it around, bone folder again. press down well and then I'm going to open it up to the middle and press down there too just so that everything is nice and flat and adhered on that floating spine piece that craft piece of cardstock okay and then close it up and manipulate that spine however you would like okay so now that's folded over and then this is folded over I think I'm gonna go ahead and deep brown these corners here and then I'll re-ink those corners and I see something with my signature that I need to fix too Y'all probably already seen what I'm a talking about. Okay, so when I close it up, every once in a while, you can see the top of that signature. See, right there. So, whatever. I'm not going to make it a huge deal. But what I am going to do is when I go through and add things to these pages I'm going to come out a little bit further so that I have some pages that are really close to the edges here because I've got too much space out here and I don't want to cut off any of this either um, I think I might I say that I don't want to cut off I might cut right down to that just so that that stays in center so if you're looking here and you look over here if I would cut off just that little piece right there I still would be in center so I'm okay with, with cutting that off and then I'll go to the back cover and line this up and cut just that much off of the back cover too and then we'll re round those corners also so I just want to go right there and cut my back cover and the same and then re round re-ink now my covers are just cardstock and that can be flimsy so we'll need to add a pretty good pocket here and back here but I'm loving it already I love that. We could make this an ephemera folder if we wanted to, but I love the idea of a like a mini scrapbook. 
That is too cute. Let's put our clips up. And then I'll show you I'm going to add a piece of that paper that will go further out than this one did so that we can get closer to the edges of our covers. I love this paper and I'm wanting to do kind of like a fold out of some kind. So I want to do it like this and fold it out that way. So what I'm thinking is this can stay this size as long as I just cut it down to that seven and three fourths tall. Cut that little bitty piece off. Fold this in half. And then I'm going to round these inside corners like that and I think I'll go ahead and round the folded edge too so then when you open it up you've got journaling space but you've got you know your edges are all rounded I'm going to ink inside and out on this and with that, you make one of the easiest pocket flip outs ever. So that's going to be attached just on the three sides. Okay, you're going to have a tuck space here. This is going to fold out for extra journaling space. And then you fold it back and close your journal. And you've got just a little decorative piece too. So what I'm going to do is put glue at the top of my page all the way down and then back on the bottom of the page and then I'm going to line up this piece so that it comes further out here and you're going to go down the edge of the page over across the bottom of it and then over across the top of it so that opens up you've got a decorative edge sticking out from the paper and then you've got tuck space here after that dries we're not gonna manipulate that too much because we want it to dry and so see then it even sticks out a little further sometimes if you squish the book much it might stick out a little bit further than the covers but I'm not worried about that. You can even open that up and make it a bookmark on another page. I love that. Let's make that tuck like I was talking about here. Um, we could just do the back side of this paper is a nice little um, polka dot and we could do that on here. I like that. Go ahead and round. Whoop, let's cut it. No, it's already cut to height length. That's good. So I'm going to round those corners. And I don't want it to be that wide. So let's trim it down just a little bit. Let's do it at... Let's see what one and a half inches looks like. Yeah, that's still too wide. Let's do one inch. And for this one, since it's so thin, what I'm going to do is put just a line of glue down this back edge only. And then line that up with this paper that we added. Okay, and when that dries, you've got this tuck space here. You can tuck little die cuts or something like that in there. Let's get one of those out of there. I can show you just a little something. Just a small little tuck space there. Just to have something else on this page. 
Okay, and then I'm not going to cut the width of this paper. I'm just going to cut it at four inches tall. And that's going to be our front and back pocket. That will be the back one. This one is the front. I'm going to go four inches. So that's going to give us a half page pocket there and then another four inches and that will be for the back i'm going to round all the corners ink them and then i'm going to attach them with some eight one eighth inch score tape on three sides and i'm also going to do a little thumb notch at the tops of them so we can line them up together like so and use our one and a half inch circle punch and kind of eyeball middle and get our little thumb notches I got a bunch of little giblets everywhere don't I all over me too it's not just the desk all right now ink then attach this in I like to come up just a touch from bottom and not go all the way down I like to have that showing where I've inked there on the bottom so I'll come up just a touch and then I'll come up from over there too not all the way to the edge like that and when you make a half sheet pocket like this you give yourself enough sturdiness to that cover so there's that one and the back inside See, these pockets are huge and they are big enough for pictures or memorabilia or anything so I love making bigger pockets like that too here are my tickets dry and like I was saying you could do some uh, stamping on them if you wanted to like this little script stamp here and do it with Maybe some black ink. And just on a couple of places. It doesn't have to be every one of them. But I do want some of that on these more white areas where I got more of that acrylic paint. I really like that. And then... <clears throat> you can use them in a variety of different ways but I've got one spot where I want to put one of these already and I wanted to show y'all where I put them and then how those tickets looked after I've altered them I love that a whole lot more than that primary red <laughs> that was showing through on there so on this front pocket I've just put one of Miss Betty Ann's lovely digitals there. Fussy cut that out and this came from one of my sticker sheets that I got. I got a little die cut poked in there in that front tuck or first tuck. I added a pocket here to this page and just put a die cut there and then I have um, another sticker put on a piece of scrap paper that was left from here and put that on the edge like a little tab made myself a tab <clears throat> excuse me and then I like how that lines up so that's a little shorter than that and then that one's a little bit longer and then I put one of our circle clips that we got in our kit and then I did another one of those just folded in half flip out tucks so you got a lot of space back there that you could put a piece of something so a little die cut or even some more um 
paper or something like that or like some ledger paper that would be pretty back there let me see if i can get to yeah my ledger paper and get one of those out of there and it's super duper thin ledger paper is this ledger paper that i get anyway and so you can fold it up this can be extra journaling space and i would want the holes showing but i folded it wrong for me to be able to do that hadn't i if i did it like that there we go the numbers are still upside down but i don't care okay so there's my tuck space in there with extra journaling you could make a little turnabout or something and clip this or you could just use the clips that come in your kit and you could clip them like that to keep those closed so i'll do that on this one back here too and get another clip and then hold on to the tuck space and then this top flap and clip those closed like that so that's the only one two of those that i'll put in this journal the other stuff i'll just have a little sticky outy stuff maybe some torn paper too but on this next page i've made a belly band with one of the pieces of cardstock that comes in this kit and i've just glued it at the top and the bottom inked it got one of miss betty ann's circles and then a die cut and then i thought i could use one of these tickets and i want the stamped stuff to be showing and do it about like this maybe up like that i like that so i've already inked these two pieces let me ink this ticket and then we've got a little decorative belly band there i'm just going to glue this here and have it sticking out on this edge kind of not straight and then glue this on like this and then just glue down the middle of this onto our belly band and get it about as centered as you possibly can and then if you've got some space for anything that's hanging off you might want to just touch up the glue a little bit so there's our little decorative belly band there on that page that we can put journaling space or you know extra journaling paper or whatever back there so that's what i'm going to do in this journal is add a bunch of pockets and i'm going to add a bunch of space to journal on extra journaling and the pockets are going to be so that they're going to be big like this so that i can put um pictures down in there if i want to i want plenty of space for pictures and i think i've got so much paper in this kit i think i'm going to cover each page with something pockets or a cluster tuck of some kind something it's going to get covered and probably what i'll do is i'll finish decorating and inking everything and all that and i'll show you the final flip through in my next video but this was a super duper simple journal mini album scrapbook whatever you want to call it that we made from the january e-club kit and really the only thing extra that i used with this was some copy paper from my stash and seam binding you know the stuff to bind the book and some adhesive 
there are lots of things you can do with the e-club kit it does not have to be cards it does not have to be um, a straight up small mini tiny tiny little journal you can make all sorts of stuff with the e-club kit so we do have, I believe, a couple of these January eClub kits left for one-time purchase at um, www.scrapbookingwithme.com on that website. If you want to, though, to make sure that you get one each month, you need to subscribe. And like I said, I'll have that link in the, the description box below. And I make a video every month of how I use the eClub kit. So you get tutorial videos every month with it too. So we're not just selling you a kit and leaving you high and dry. You get tutorial videos on how to use it. Y'all have a great day. God bless. I'll see you in the next video. Bye y'all.